Hello, welcome to Wellness Live. My name is Dr. Olivia Moses, and this broadcast is brought to you by Loma Linda University Health's Department of Living Whole, and that is our wellness program. Well, we are so excited that you have joined us for our second, that is our second COVID uh, social distancing broadcast. So we are not in the studio. I am in my home studio, and our guest is in a different place, but we are going to make this work and have a great session for you today. As you know, we have been dealing with COVID-19 for a little while now. Some of us have gone back to work, some of us haven't, and it's been kind of a trying time. And so today's topic actually really goes well with what some of you may be feeling, and that is the topic of burnout. So our special guest today with, with us today is Dr. Katia Stoletny, and we are so excited that she is here. She is a psychiatrist here at Loma Linda University Health, and she is the medical director of substance use recovery and the wellness program over there. And so she is the perfect person to actually talk to us about burnout and maybe some of the things that we can do to maybe help get back on track. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Stoletny. Well, hello everybody. I'm so excited to be here and share some time with you. And this is a topic I'm very excited about. Um, so let me pull up a little bit of information to share with you all. And we can get started. Can you tell me, Olivia, you see this? Awesome. All right. So don't burn out. Fire up. That's the... Um, invitation I want to have for you. And today we're, we're going to talk about burnout. So what is burnout? There's a lot going on around in, in the news, or if you Google burnout, you're going to find lots of information. And um, let's start let's start addressing what burnout is. So um, burnout is actually an outcome of gradual depletion of energetic resources resulting from prolonged exposure to stress. And there's another um, um, definition of burnout I like, so I'm going to share that one with you too. Burnout is a, a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress. It occurs when you feel overwhelmed, emotionally drained, and unable to meet constant demands. So burnout is something that's very much linked to um, work, but not just only about work. It has to do with prolonged stress, and that's what we'll be talking about. Some of the characteristics of burnout, people that get to the point of burnout may experience a low sense of accomplishment, emotional exhaustion, cynicism, cynicism depersonalization. Um, so burnout, is, it really affects the, the whole person. It, it's been, this is something that's been studied for a really long time. There is a burnout inventory done to do some research to better understand burnout. And there's lots of studies about burnout in professionals. What I'm showing you here is the burnout in United States healthcare professionals. And this was done in 2018. And um, uh, the highlighted portion, it says that healthcare professionals with over one half of physicians and a third of nurses experience symptoms of burnout. So this is a really um, an epidemic. And we're talking about the COVID pandemic, uh, but here um, burnout, it's another epidemic that's very prevalent, especially in the healthcare population. And that's why I thought it's very important to share. Um, before I get there, uh, I want to mention burnout is not something that one day you get. Uh, burnout is something that can slowly creep up on people. So you might be excited about your job and suddenly you, you start feeling a little more stressed and it gets to sort of like a peak in stress and then you start falling down into a ladder of not like detaching from work and feeling less fulfilled about work. So it's a steady, um, slippery slope into burnout, um, not something that happens overnight. And some of the contributors to burnout, um, one of the top ones is a lot of many bureau bureaucratic tasks, spending too many hours at work, 
um, it, for healthcare providers, the use of uh, medical records, electronic medical records, um, and this is more about physician burnout, um, but also can be applied to many other professions. Lack of respect from administrations, um, employees, colleagues, or sa staff, insufficient compensation or reimbursement, lack of control at work, um, regulations, feeling like a cog in a wheel, so feeling that your job doesn't make such a big impact. Um, so there's many contributors to burnout. And this is specific to physician burnout because it's, um, I find it that it's so high um, that it's important to share. So more, to, more than 40% of physicians and up to 50% of female physicians are burnt out. And some specialties, of course, um, suffer more than others. Uh, and this is from surveys done to thousands of physicians. So what does it look like? What is burnout, um, this burn, burnout syndrome? And also, is it a mental illness? So to begin with the second question, um, burnout is not a mental illness. It is not a diagnosis. Burnout is more of an um, experience um, that affects your whole body. And you can have physical symptoms from burn burnout, you can have emotional symptoms, and you can have behavioral symptoms. So to go over some of the symptoms, um, people may feel tired and drained. And this is even like if you're sleeping well, you might still fe be feeling tired, exhausted, um, frequent headaches, muscle aches and pain. Um, it may affect sleep and appetite. It may cause people to self-doubt um, themselves or feel helpless. It may start feeling, causing a feeling of detachment from the, from the work environment or from people around them, losing motivation for the job that once they enjoy. And people may become increasingly cynical and not, um, not feel satisfied uh, for what they're doing. In, um, as a result, some of the behaviors that can be noticed, it might, people might start withdrawing from their job, might start isolating, procrastinating. Some people may even use um, things to cope with the stress, such as food, drugs, and alcohol. And this is where I get to see this, this end side, like extreme, I see it at home. I'm not at home, at work, um, where people have to come in for detox, for treatment. Um, but then you add up something extra. So a lot of people um, that were already struggling with burnout, then were faced with COVID-19 and the epidemic and the quarantine, right? So you add up to a very stressed out population. And um, this is not just on medical professions, but in general, um, you add um, the COVID-19 pandemic and the extra stress that that brings, right? So you're adding um, the stress for your finances. Is my job safe? Am I going back to job? my job? Are the kids going back to school? I'm getting, I'm driving myself not here with the kids at home and all these extra stressors that come from um, COVID-19. And um, burnout gets this um, boost and it's now stress on dynamite. So burnout affects mind, spirit, and body. And I want to um, share this quote um, from Alexandra Michael or Michelle that it says, it's a mistake to assume that burnout is merely an emotional response to long hours or challenging job. Rather, mounting scientific evidence shows that burnout takes a profound physical toll that cascades well beyond our professional lives. Using cutting edge techniques, integrative research teams are demonstrating that burnout is not just a state of mind, but a condition that leaves its mark on the brain as well as the body. So I want to share uh, briefly a study. Um, the title of the study is called Psychosocial Stress Reversibility Disrupts Prefrontal Processing and Attention Control. So they studied 20 people um, that participated in a long, uh, month long stress. Um, they got brain imaging done. They went through a month long stressor and then they got follow up imaging done. And they also had um, an intervention done. So, on this second slide here, we can see the um, effect of 
pre and post intervention. And um, burnout and the A uh, shows the effect that burnout has on the prefrontal cortex. So in this study and in other studies show that stress and burnout can really affect the way that we think, affect the prefrontal cortex. That's where we um, think things through, we make the, our decisions, there's a rational thinking and burnout affects this. Stress actually uh, gets your amygdala, your emotional brain all wired up, anxious, stressed out, and it shrinks the part where of the brain that really thinks things through. Um, and they did an intervention with coaching for these individuals. And after the intervention, the effects of burnout that the, bur the burnout had had in the brain were actually reversing, reversing. So burnout is not something that will cause long, um, uh, um, long term effect. It can actually be reversed. And we'll go this, through this quickly because I know we want to open it up for questions. But um, this other study looked at burnout and risk of coronary heart disease. And uh, to go briefly through it, they looked at more than 8,000 people and they followed people for over three years. And in the end, for the conclusions, burnout was found to be an independent risk factor for future incidents of coronary heart disease. What is this telling us? If you don't do anything about burnout, you are adding your, an, an extra risk factor for you to have even things like pretty bad, like coronary heart disease that can lead to like a heart attack, stroke, et cetera. Um, so we're gonna stop right here and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and get some comments and questions. So thank you, Dr. Stoletny. That was fantastic first half of your presentation. And I wanted to remind our audience today, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them down in the comments below if you're watching us live and we can ask them directly to the expert herself while we have her here. So go ahead and type your questions in. While you're doing that, um, Dr. Stoletny, I had a question regarding, um, you mentioned sometimes burnout can be a gradual, you know, step down yes. process or however you want to call it. Um, with, with that being the process, are there things that we should look um, for so we don't get there and then have to deal with the burnout, but are there things that we should look for that we can maybe intervene early? Of course. Um, so, and I was even gonna mention this in the next slide, starting back up the presentation, but um, the same way that you get into burnout step-by-step step is the way that you can start getting out of burnout. So no matter where you are on that spectrum, uh, from totally fine to totally burnt out, that's a spectrum, right? So no matter where you are, finding it sooner than later, um, you want to pay attention to your own symptoms so that you can do something about it and not get to the, the extreme. So all those symptoms I was uh, sharing before, like if, if people are feeling exhausted and they don't know why, you know, if they're, they're not feeling fulfilled by their jobs as they used to, or now they are more irritable at work, um, you know, not, not engaging as they used to, all those things can be um, red flags to there's something going on. So you don't need to be totally burnt out to do something about it. You want to engage in your job and enjoy it and thrive, not just survive. So if you feel like you're sort of like surviving, you might want to do something about it. Okay. And I'm assuming we're going to talk about that a little later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. So we are getting some questions. So this is actually a really good one. Um, it says, how does burnout differ from stress? So burnout is the extreme to stress, right? It comes from a stress response. So everybody will go through stress. We all experience stress and a little bit of stress is necessary for us to function and to feel motivated to do, to do things, right? But in that scale, you may say in the stress scale, there gets a, to a point where if somebody is on stress mode constantly, then your body starts being affected. And we can talk about physiology. There's a sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. And if you're constantly in over mode, over right mode, your brain does not get a time to relax and unwind. And uh, the 
the parasympathetic nervous system is very important to help calm down. So there are many strategies a person can learn to help themselves calm down. But when you're in a chronic, chronic stress mode, then that's when you get to the risk of, oh, maybe I'm, I'm on the road to burnout. I would assume that, you know, I think you talked a lot about physicians, but really anybody can get burned out, right? You know, we, a lot of people have stress and I would assume a lot of the symptoms are exactly the same. People are people kind of thing. Yes. And then with that being said, um, as these, you know, as you see the progression happen or you're feeling these things, what are things that that you can look for in others? Are they the same things? How do you address other people? You know, like maybe it's your loved one. You know, you see these things start to happen. How do you even approach a spouse or a parent? Well, um, same thing, right? Uh, Keeping an eye for this type of symptoms, for this type of red flags that might be happening and reaching out. And in one of the first few slides that we'll talk about, we'll talk about exactly this, the connection and the importance of having a good connection with somebody trusted, um, because that is one of the first things that a person can do. So we'll talk a little bit more about it next. Great. So one more question before we get to your second half, and I think this is an important one, so I'll stop here with this last one, is can children suffer from burnout? That's a good question. Um, I would say probably yes, but then we're also getting into um, trauma and, um, and mental health illness or traumas, uh, traumas or stress-related responses. So I don't want to speak about children because I haven't done the research enough, but I would assume yes. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for the this question and answer. And to our audience, please go ahead and type your questions in because we will have one more chance to ask some questions of Dr. Stoletny. So thank you, Dr. Stoletny. Awesome. So let me share back the presentation. I think I have it right here. Okay. This is it. No, it's not working. This one. All right. So here we're going to talk about. It's not working. Yes. The good news. So what can we do about burnout? So first thing is awareness, and by just considering, do I have burnout? Do I have the symptoms? You are already taking the first thing. So that is one of the biggest things. Awareness opens your eyes. It makes you consider what am I going through? And um, once you open that door, then you can decide what can I do next? Um, From Ingham's study, you may have heard of this. This is a hard study that's been done since 1948. They initially started with like 5,000 people, but they are now on the fourth generation of participants are looking at lifestyle. Part of the study looks at what leads to happiness. And some of, I'm just going to go straight to the conclusions. Some of the conclusions um, include that people's happiness depend on the happiness of connected others. So one of the main conclusions on happiness is that if a person has one trusted other person that can be a family member, a friend, one other trusted person, their likelihood of happiness is much, much, much higher. And, And they are healthier people as well. Um, There is this three degree rule. um, If you may have heard of uh, obesity and smoking. So if you are surrounded by people that um, have obesity or that are smokers, even if they're like a friend of a friend, they can still impact you and get you at a higher likelihood of smoking or being obese. And that happens if you have a friend of a friend of a friend that smokes or has obesity. Same thing happens with happiness. If you have happier people in your life, even if they're friends of friends, or even if they're friends of friends of friends, they still impact your likelihood to be happier and to deal with life better. So happiness is a collective phenomenon. And this is where I go to my tip number one, which is find a friend to reach out to and talk about what you're going through. Um, so a few years back, I uh, was experiencing uh, some burnout myself, and uh, I had a friend at work that I started talking with, 
funny thing is, when we started talking about what we were going through, neither of us expected that the other was going through the same thing. In reality, she thought I was thriving and doing great at work, at home with my kids, everything. I was I was struggling with stress and burnout, and so did she, and I didn't know. So talking about it brought awareness to both of us, and we were like, wow, okay, so we can support each other. Um, that led to her inviting me to a conference where this was exactly what was addressed. And it started shifting my experience at work and my ability to cope and deal with stress. So this I want to bring from Kobe Bryant. Um, he had this definition of greatness, which is to inspire the people next to you. When you inspire someone, they will inspire someone else and the cycle of greatness will continue indefinitely. So why this? Because when we are undergoing tons of stress, we tend to focus on that and we tend to suffer that. And uh, our experience goes around that. Um, so we talked about um, the impact of having positive people around us, of having a trusted person around us. And not just that, but when we start inspire those around us, then that can have a huge impact on our environment and on, on ourselves. So this is where I want to talk about the A factor. Um, there's a Spanish speaker called Victor Coopers that I love to hear. And he is a great speaker and talks about the A factor. So I, that's what I wanna share with you right now. Um, he talks about um, how we are light bulbs walking, basically. Human, be human beings are walking light bulbs. Um, why? Because we're constantly sharing energy with those around us. Uh, and you can think maybe of the last time you met a new person in your life and start, if you can remember the first few seconds of the conversation, you probably can get like a feeling, a sense of the person's energy. And you might be used, like three seconds and you might be feeling like, wow, you know, the energy is so high. And I love talking to this person and they bring the best out of me. And there might be another conversation that you can remember. And then two, three seconds in that conversation, you're feeling like, ah, oh, this person is draining me out. And that's because we share energy with those around us and those around us share energy with us. Where is, why is this important? The value a person has comes from this simple, um, simple formula. The value that people attribute you or the value that we attribute to other people comes from knowledge. The K is for knowledge. So some people are very valued for what they know. Um, S is skills. So for some people like um, Kobe Bryant or other sports figure are valued for their skills and what they can do. And A is your attitude. If you think of your um, best teacher or professor, do you remember them most for what they did or what they knew? Or do you remember them most for how they expressed their energy and they made you feel? Most likely it was because of their attitude. The attitude in this formula, the great thing is that knowledge and skill, they add to your value, but attitude multiplies, it multiplies. So attitude is a very important factor. And you might be saying, why are you talking about this? Reality is your attitude is something that is you're not born with. It's not something that, oh, you are you were lucky to get and you have a great attitude or you were born like a negative person and a pessimist. No, reality is your attitude can be developed. And that is where my tip number two comes in. And this is set intention. A set an intention for your attitude. Um, I learned this tip from... Oh my goodness, I'm blanking his name. Anyways, a high top performer coach. Um, and he talks about setting an intention. And the tip is very simple. And that's why I want to share it with you. Whenever you're going from one, uh, one environment to the next. So for example, you're going from your commute to work or you're going from work to home environment. Stop for a minute and take a deep breath and let go. Let go of the tension from the activity you are coming out from. Just take two, three breaths and let go of the tension. And then think of what's the intention? 
I want to bring into, into this next environment I'm walking into. Think of that intention. Do I want to show up as a positive person? Do I want to show up as a strong leader? Do I want to show up as energized? Set that intention. And when you set that intention, your brain starts working to meet that expectation. And try it out. Try it out for a day or two or, or even a week. And then um, come up with your own conclusions. I think it's a wonderful. I started doing this myself, and it really changed um, my days. And if you if you can think of how many times maybe you came back from work all stressed out, and you start taking it off on the people that are around you, uh, maybe your children, maybe your loved ones, and unfortunately, we take out our stress on those that we love the most. So setting an intention can be a very simple tool to um, to stop that stress from one environment to the next. And I think we'll stop here, um, Olivia. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Uh, that was really, really helpful. We have some questions that we want to get to, but I love the, just a comment from, from me personally, I love what you mentioned about your, so let's go back to your title about Mm -hmm. Let's not think about it as burnout. Let's fire up. And exactly. to me, that title basically says that um, your perspective is very important. Yes. And yes. perspective can change and it can be honed mm -hmm. and it can be developed. And yeah. what I think is so empowering about your title and the talk today is that burnout does not have to be here to stay. If you are burnt out, if you are stressed out, whatever you want to call it in your personal life, it is something that can be transformed and we can actually change and get better. Exactly. And really find life important. So I think that, I mean, um, and self-care is really important. So I love, I love that topic. We had a question. Um, the actual questions are, what are good treatments for burnout other than reducing work hours? And you talked about, you know, it be intentional and to talk. But... I do think, are there any others that you kind of want to mention um, to answer this particular question? So I wanted to think of something easy and practical to like, you know, that people can start doing right now. But reality is there's many things that people can do. And it also depends on what type of stress they're undergoing, um, what, you know, what type of environment they work on um, and what tools they might need. Some people might need um, to go to therapy. Some people might need to do coaching and learn skills to deal with stress. Um, so uh, I can tell you this is the road out of, uh, of burnout, but I can tell you that there can be small steps that you can start taking on a daily basis to improve the way that you feel. Um, so self-care, you mentioned self-care, and yeah. I think that's very important. So and the sh when you start shifting your mind from um, just surviving into more of a thriving um, mindset, mm -hmm. it slowly starts making a shift that self-care becomes something that's important and that's it, it just needs to happen. It's a priority, right? Mm -hmm. When um, it, a lot of people feel that, you know, I need to change my job to, to get away from stress and burnout. The reality is maybe you don't. Maybe if you start working on your mindset and the self-care and prioritizing things that are very important for you, you maybe you can go back to enjoying your job. Uh, it doesn't mean that it necessarily is cutting back on hours. For some people, yeah, because there's people that work way too much. But um, for some people, it might be that, no, you need to start making this small changes um, that will lead to a healthier way of life. If that makes yeah. sense. Yes, no, that absolutely makes sense. And one of the things that you also mentioned was you have to pay attention. And I think that's what a lot of us just don't do. We're kind of in survival mode. We're just trying to get to the end of the day yes. and trying to hopefully get some sleep so we can start it all over again yes. tomorrow. Yes. And we don't kind of stop and take inventory. Do you have yes. any tips on questions we should ask ourselves or how do we take inventory? What's a good way to take inventory of, of our life? So recently I was, um, I did another presentation of, on a similar topic and we were talking about two very important questions to know if you are living a life aligned to your priorities and values. Mm -hmm. And these are two very simple questions, but if you really pay attention, they can tell you a lot about how you're living your life. 
So question number one is, what is the most important thing in, in your life? And this, um, this can be thing or things or people, right? Um, so when, when you have that down, when you know what your priorities are, question number two is, how much time do you, do you spend in that? Um, so same thing comes back to your job, right? What's my priori priority piece in, at my work, my, at my job? And how much time do I get to spend in that? Because maybe, you know, there's a bunch of committees and meetings I'm going to that are not necessarily aligned to what um, my goals and priorities are at work, but I end up saying yes to everything, right? So maybe taking an inventory of what, of what I'm doing and what is really aligned to your values. And then values, it becomes another big thing, right? Which is a whole another topic. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's great. I think those mm -hmm. two are very, you know, they're very um, short questions, but very complex. Yes. You know, to kind of weed through that. And I think they're very important questions for us to ask ourselves. And this this topic is, I could talk to you all night about this topic. Yes. Oh, me too. <laughs> you know, have experienced some sort of burnout before. And, you know, um, our YouTube audience is having some really great responses to your talk today. So that's even real exciting. But one of the things that I wanted to talk a little bit about is you said that burnout was a little bit more, it was more severe than stress. And then there's probably a step after burnout as well that is more severe, that maybe you need to start talking about a professional intervention, that maybe yeah. the self-care um, might not be enough. Can you mention that and maybe um, talk about what that looks like when maybe we should you know, call someone or so solicit help? So, so burnout is a response to stress, to um, prolonged exposure to stress. And uh, um, in the end, burnout can lead to clinical depression as well. So not that it will, but if if somebody is maybe predisposed or, you know, um, chronic stress itself can lead to a clinical um, scenario of uh, clinical depression. Mm -hmm. So um, it definitely, um, this is not, um, the difference between burnout and depression sometimes might be, uh, might need a professional to, to help guide where are we and what type of modality of treatment might need. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And, you know, one of the things that we try to talk about here at Wellness Live is that we want to get rid of the stigma regarding getting help for mental health. Yes. You know, and you don't have to have some severe uh, diagnosable problem before you get help from a professional. Yes. Yes. And so, you know, one of the things that I, with the people that I work with, I try to, and please, you know, chime in here, is that what I do, I try to say, when we go, when we are working in the kitchen and we mm -hmm. cut ourselves and we have a gash and it's bleeding, we go to the emergency room, we get it yeah. stitched up and we treat it. Exactly. Um, for some reason, when it when we're going through our day and we have a mental wound, let's say, yes. or emotional wound, for some reason we look at it, we let it bleed. Sometimes it gets infected, and you hope it'll go away. And you know that's and we don't go to the professional to yes. get this stuff and yes. to treat it. And yes. so you know what? So what is your advice about getting rid of that stigma um, about mental health? Uh, Stigma itself is so hard to get rid of. Um, my, I encourage people to take care of their mental health even before you get to mental illness because prevention is key, right? So if you're developing a strong mental health, it's going to be harder to get to mental illness. But um, it's a spectrum also, right? So there's um, health to illness and there's that whole spectrum. And no matter where you are, finding um, somebody to help you and support you and give you tools to get better and thrive. I think this is a long, lifelong journey. Mm -hmm. I don't think that, well, I think everybody could benefit from education and emotional intelligence. Um, and it doesn't need to be an injury that you need to fix, but getting yourself um, help or education in emotional intelligence can be really, really, really an advantage to live a life and thrive in life and not just survive. Mm -hmm. And it could be very transformational. Thank you so much for uh, talking with us and spending your time with us today. This has been extremely useful and I think um, we can all learn something about getting uh, maybe 
getting better at identifying these symptoms to burnout. So thank yes. you so much. Um, and thank you to you, our audience, who has joined us for another Wellness Live. Next month, we have another great speaker. We have Dr. Bissell. He is a physical therapist here at Loma Linda University Health, and he has some really innovative interventions, and he will be talking about neuropathic pain and whole person care. So it's a great topic. Please share this with your friends. Now, I want to remind you that Wellness Live, if you are watching us on YouTube or on our website, you can share this link. It will be on demand. It will be archived that if this is a topic that Dr. Stowe let me just talk to us about that a friend or a family member wants, go ahead, share them, uh, share this link with them because we have a number of different topics here at Wellness Live. Well, again, I want to thank you for joining us. I want to thank our guests today. And my name is Dr. Olivia Moses, and we'll see you next time.